And hello yet again, everybody. Are uh, you getting sick of my voice yet? I am. Alright, so this is, uh, I suppose, part three of our uh, painting a Star Destroyer tutorial or demonstration. Um, okay, so as you can see, if you watch the other parts, you know what I was doing. Um, you can see I have uh, finished, for the time being, putting our first layer of tape on. Didn't take me long. Uh, sort of 10-15 minutes uh, did that top and bottom didn't do as much on the bottom as on the top um, basically the, the bottom is pretty heavily detailed with the uh, little bits of raised detail so I don't want to subtract from that too much so we'll start off with the darker colour we'll start off um, fairly sparse on, on the stickers on the underside um, and we'll probably add some more as, a, as we continue on um, but you can see the effect I was going for there. All right, so just tip it up a little bit there. Sorry, I've got to paint in one hand. One second. Okay, so you can see the uh, stickers there. I've tried to keep most of them sort of in line with that central section, as we're saying, sort of the spine of the of the ship. Uh, keep them running along in that direction. And uh, yeah, make sure that one edge is is parallel with that. And um, away we go. So for this colour, um, I have used a little bit of the Hobby 332 again, um, and the 315. So the 332, uh, which is this one here, which is light aircraft grey, and um, then the other other one, which is a bit lighter than that, was the uh, 315 grey. So I've just mixed the two of them um, pretty much two third parts, the 315, and one third part the uh, other one. So let's just try and get a bit of stuff going through here, that's looking pretty good. So I haven't even done a test yet, so let's see how it comes through, I'm just going to turn my little exhaust fan on there. Alrighty. Now those of you wondering why I don't spray it in the exhaust fan, it's actually quite strong. So I don't need to hold it right up to the fan, like some of them, and um, spray it. And it was actually, uh, some of you might have seen it in my earlier videos, it's actually an uh, old range hood. That I've taken off display at a shop. So we're just painting over those, I'm just trying to do it so you can see it. Oops, and a little bit of too much paint. So I've probably thinned this solution a little bit too much, and a bit too much paint's come out on the front there. It's not that bad. Um, for those of you that are new to airbrushing, when you spray on a bit too much paint, leave it all right do not touch it you should be tempted to push it around a bit and do things with it just leave it um, the worst thing you can do is try and, and manipulate it so just let it go um, later on we can we can sort that out with top coats things like that it's not a huge issue all right so don't panic if you do it I still do it all the time all right so just going a bit lighter Now you don't always want to try and cover the surface in one pass, so give it you know, multiple passes, especially if it's a bit thin like I've got now. Um, so as I say, I didn't do a test, so you're seeing it as it comes, no editing, um, but yeah, so it's a bit, a bit thin, that's okay, I can work with that, I can work with that. Alright, still going, um, as I was saying before, come down from the top. So trying to come down for the top, I don't want to fill all those little recesses with paint uh, of lighter colours, I want to try and keep them as dark as I can. So going over again and slip to the bottom. Uh, now I'm not worried about the base getting paint on it, I'm really not too concerned. If I decide I want to keep it, I'll, um, I'll paint it black. Uh, or even maybe run a bit of the thinners over it just to see if I can wipe off some of that paint but it's really not uh, not that crucial because I haven't decided what I want to do with it yet I don't know if I'm going to keep it on that base or if I'm going to mount it on something separate let's just see how this comes out first hey? so I think I've tried so as I was saying I've tried to go a lighter shade but there's not a huge difference is there so I think I've pretty close to matching the shade 
before. Typically when you spray it, you usually see a, a bit more of a colour variation, but not much happening. That's alright though, it doesn't matter. We'll um if it if it's gonna stay that way then when we peel off those stickers there might be a, just a tiny bit of variation. So this is the first one I've built. I haven't done any others of these. I've done this technique before, but um, not using these particular paints. And not on a Star Destroyer, which shouldn't make a big difference. That's why I wasn't too worried about it. But so far, I'm doing pretty average. All right, let's keep going. All right, everyone. So that's pretty much that coat done. I've still got a fair bit of paint left. You can see in there, still got a fair bit of paint left. So. We're going to just pause it for a minute. I'm going to capture this paint in my little lid and we're going to lighten it up a bit and uh, run it through one more time. So we'll be back in a few seconds, wait a sec. Alright, so we've just lightened it up a little bit more. It's only a touch, so I, once again, I don't think it's really going to make a difference. And I'm just going to hit those high areas uh, on the model with it. Uh, see, there, yeah, it's really. That's alright. Not the end of the world. That's okay. Alright. It's looking good. Not looking too bad at all. I don't think. I don't know, my big fat fingers are in the way, but I think it's uh it's coming along. It's getting there. Alright, so we're going to uh Pause you again, we're going to let this dry and then we're going to uh, apply a few more of these little um, bits of tape to it and we'll go lighter once more and we'll just see if we can get the effect we're after. Alrighty. Well, I hope it's looking different again. We've stuck some more of the uh, paper on it, more of the uh, masking tape, so hopefully it's coming along. We're just going to test this paint before we put it on. This is the same paint I was using before, just with a little bit of white added to it, just to uh, bring it along a little bit, just to change the shade. Uh, and if you can see that, it's actually looking a fair bit wider than what it was before. That's alright. Yeah, from above. Excuse me. Good, looking good, looking good. Sorry, still getting used to filming myself doing this. Bloody newbies, amateurs, uploading videos onto the internet thinking that they know what they're talking about. Alright, let's go on the underside. should come out quite well guys, I'm getting pleased with this. Still not too sure if our contrast is correct, like the contrast between the tones is correct, but... So when we do it next time we might uh, increase it, but it's, it's not looking too bad. Not looking too bad at all, so let's get some of these again. Remember, it's always better to do multiple passes than it is to do one big pass and try and load everything onto the model at once. More often than not, that'll end in disaster. That's good, isn't it? It's a fair bit lighter than what it was. And you just see, you see the depth in there? Because you know, we've changed, we're coming in from the top, so it's hitting the top surfaces and it's sort of coming out um, and it's creating that little shadow in there. And um, when my fat finger isn't blocking it, uh, love it. I reckon that's going to look fantastic. Uh, of course, we haven't put anything in the trenches, nothing in the trenches, but the effect of those is a lot more minimal because they're, they're a lot smaller. And I haven't put anything in the rear either. We have painted um, separately, I have painted the engine nozzles, so they're uh, painted and ready to be attached. Um, but uh, yeah, we're just going on this method just a little bit longer. So, 
I'm going to do one more coat, I think, guys and girls. I'm going to do one more coat, so I will um, add a bit more white to this paint. Oh, we've pretty much used that anyway, so I might make up another mix. Um, yeah, we'll hit it again and uh, put some more stickers on there, put some more masking tape on there, and um, yeah, just see how big contrast we can make. Uh, and hopefully it turns out well, otherwise I'm going to look like a real dill when I upload these. But, uh, alrighty, see you soon. And we're back for the final instalment in this chapter. Alright, so I think we're going to just finish off with the painting here. I'm going to let everything dry, and then we'll come back in the next chapter, we'll peel everything off, and we'll continue on with the weathering, and I'll show you a few other bits and pieces. But let's just see how this, this bit goes. So I've just put a new solution into the airbrush. It is pretty light, pretty thin. And uh, it should be a nice light colour, just to finish it off nice, almost white. So basically I've just used the um, uh, blah, 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 Mr. Hobby, uh, Hobby Colour 3115, grey FS, or uh, sort of semi-flat, whatever. And um, mixed that with some more Tamiya white. So let's just see how this goes. Uh, we're just spraying from above. Same technique as before. And you can probably hear the music in the background. Oh, I'm not a big fan of Maroon 5, so please don't judge me. It's actually not my playlist. Well, I'm saying that now. If anyone asks, it's not my playlist. Alright. No offence, Maroon 5. I'm sure you're all lovely people. Alright, so that's lined it up again. Alright, you see that contrast on the side there? It's just getting darker with each coat. It's good. Good. Uh, happy, happy, happy little man. Well, not so little man. Don't tell anyone. Uh, if I'm getting a bit zany, guys, I'm sorry. It's early in the morning, I, and um, still a lot of drawing and stuff to do. I've got a few customers on, on the go at the moment, so got a bit to do, but I thought I've got to have some fun as well. Well, but not that I don't find drawing fun, I do. But I've got to make some models. I've got to make some models. I can't let down the internet community. Not the Facebook and the YouTube community. I've promised, I've made promises. I've told you I'd do a tutorial. And I'm, see, I'm rambling so much, I'm filming completely off shot. That's just good of me, isn't it? That's really handy. I hope you learned a lot there, looking at the paper. Alright, guys. Shutting up and being serious. Uh, so that's a pretty heavy coat. I think I've just overdone it with that last spot. We'll just let that dry. Before we touch it again on that side. A bit, a bit crazy. All right. How's that? Not too bad, is it? All right, so that's lightened right up. Now, what we will do in the next sequence, once we peel everything off, it will probably actually darken it up again. Uh, a little bit, which is not too bad, but um, we'll cover that when we get to it. Yeah, we just just want to touch up the high areas again on this. All right. All right. So the next upload will be very very soon. I'm just giving it a break for tonight, and because uh, I'm filming off shot, as you just noticed, and I apologise. I haven't got another model, so I can't go back and do it again. Um, so bear with me, guys. This is my first tutorial. Don't be so harsh. Um, all right. So that's done. Tomorrow, I am going to be taking these off. Um, we're going to give it a clear coat, and I'll show you why I've got the gloss clear and the flat clears um, there to be used. All right, so we're going to use a gloss clear coat on it to begin with, and um, you'll see why we're doing that. And uh, we'll do a bit of weathering. Uh, hopefully, hopefully everybody, it comes together nicely. I think it's looking pretty good. It's not looking too bad. Um, drop me your thoughts. Let me know what you think. Let me know if there's something I can do a bit better other than my camera work. My camera work's a bit shoddy. Sorry, everyone. It's not really acceptable when you're on YouTube to have shoddy camera work, I know. But a uh, small subject. I chose a hard one to do straight off the bat. That was silly of me. But it's coming along, and let's just see really quickly how that overspray is done. Okay. So I don't know if you noticed it when I was painting before, but I oversprayed right along the, ugh, get in shot, right along the spine there. Alright, so instead of 
worrying about it, trying to dab it off or hit it with the air again or do something with it, I just left it. Um, and that's really the best thing you can do. If there's any bits that are going to be raised um, where paint's sort of set a bit higher or set along the edges or anything like that, it's going to be taken care of in our next steps. Alright? So don't stress, I'm not. Well, thanks again for bearing with me. Um, I hope you like I hope you guys are getting something out of it. Um, as I said, I'm not a professional, but you know, I hope you're... Um, for those of you that are new to airbrushing, I hope you're picking up some new techniques that you can use. And... Um, you know, this, is, this is helpful for you in some regard at least you can see this technique so you can do it on bigger models um, when when I say when Bandai makes them because you are going to make them aren't you Bandai you are going to make a bigger one um, but still I love the mini ones and look at that I mean it's coming up a treat it is a small small kit and I think it's looking fantastic so um, nothing but optimistic alright thank you very much this will be uploaded uh, or the next one will be uploaded uh, hopefully within 24 hours thanks guys bye bye